Google Forms can be very useful when trying to facilitate group work in your classes. So it's just a tool. It's not the entire part of doing the group work, but it's a great tool to help you organize the class. And I'm going to show you a couple things we can do with it. So I'm going to start with Google Forms. Now, and I'm going to make a new form. Okay. And uh, one of the ways we could do this is to use this as a way to collect students' names and email addresses. So if we start our form, and one of our questions is name, uh, you might even want to do separate first name and last name because the key to this, the reason we're doing this more than any other reason is the fact that it will create a Google Sheet for us that will allow us to organize our groups. And that's really the main idea of, of this particular screencast. You might even want to separate first name and last name so that you can organize the data a little more easily. But for today's purposes, I'm simply going to do name. And if I want to create email addresses, now there's a reason that you might want to do that is because if you are doing something like separating a Google Sheet and by groups and you want to create multiple Google Sheets and give them and assign them to specific groups, you can copy and paste the email addresses, the students' email addresses from here. So let's add one for their emails. Okay. And um, this will be great for collecting names and emails. Now I'm going to take this a step further. If all you want to do is collect names so that you can organize your students into groups, this is all you really need. Okay, but I'm going to take this a step further. One of the group activities or small group activities that we can facilitate in a class would be that of debate. And oftentimes you will poll the room to see which side of a debate they fall on. So you can actually separate your students that way. Now, it is also essential that you do match these with names because that's how you can start to split your class into the groups that will be representing one side or the other side of the debate. So, uh, you know, your, your side, let's say side, I'm sure you can say this better, on the issue. Okay, and let's give them maybe a couple of choices. Okay, uh, let's say that they are, maybe they are reviewing a case uh, of something or whatever. Uh, whatever. So they can actually, this, these might be two people on sides of maybe a controversy and they can pick one side or the other. So of course, when the student chooses it, they can, they'll be grouped into the one side and then you can set your debate up accordingly. So let's see what this would look like from the, re the student's view. And uh, rather than sending this out and trying to come in and, you know, in a different way, I'm just gonna go to the preview. Because I really, the, the key is I just wanted to show you how to set this up and what the results are going to look like. So I could put in my name. Let's say my name's Joe, okay? And my email is joe at email.com. And let's say that I'm taking the side of RIAA and I'm going to hit submit, okay? Now I'm going to do just one more. And my, uh, my next response, I'll be Jill. And I'll be Jill at email.com. And I will be taking another side. Okay, so I'm going to hit submit. Now, I think you can get the idea that many people will be responding. So once you get your responses, and this is the reason we use this, is if we go to our responses and click this little green icon, it's going to create, we'll just select the default here, create, and it will create a list where you can sort your list by the group. So let's say that we want to split our class into two and we want to keep track of who's in what's group. You can sort this so that it would group all the people who are representing negative land and all the people that are re 
uh, representing RIAA, you would see the two groups together. And now you have your two groups. And this is a quick and easy way to organize your groups for debate. However, if you weren't going to use it for debate, let's go back to our first example. You can take their email addresses. Okay. And let's say that these people were all going to be in group one. So if I were to make a Google Doc, now a quick way to start a new doc is docs.new. And I wanted to assign everybody in a particular group to this particular document. Okay, let's say, you know, fill in ideas here. Okay, if I wanted to do that, I would I could go to my share and I have to save my document first. And I could paste the email addresses of the people. Now, these aren't real email addresses, so this will be a mess. But that's a quick and easy way to do it so you don't have to type in every single email address. Collect your emails into your spreadsheets. So that was two ways of looking at using Google Forms. One would be to assess opinions to to create our groups so they can join our groups. And another is to do this. now. One other thing to consider is you could also use Google Forms as a pretest uh, on a topic if you wanted to separate your class into groups based on the, the knowledge that they have at that time. So if you wanted to create a sort of a beginner group, an intermediate group, and an advanced group, you could use the Google Forms as a pretest for that okay and of course that would entail making it into a quiz but i just wanted to kind of give you an idea of of this particular aspect of it rather than that